Our scripture for this morning comes from the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 18, verses 1 through 6. If you have your Bible, I encourage you to open it up, uh, open up the app on your phone, uh, whatever uh, means you use, and follow along. God may say something to you in these verses that he hasn't spoken to me this morning. But beginning Jeremiah, chapter 18, and beginning in verse 1, we see God's word reads like this. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I'll give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter does, declares the Lord? Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel." Pray with me. Oh God, may your word take root in our lives and bear fruit for your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to welcome you to this time of worship with First Baptist Church of Wilmington. Uh, Though we're not together in the sanctuary, it's good that we can be together in one heart, one mind, and one spirit to share in this time of worship. So welcome to to this time and to this place. I, I, I myself am a visual learner. If I see a picture or a video or a graph or something, it just helps me remember things a lot better. Even if there's not a picture available, a, a word picture, a good story helps me to understand deep theological and spiritual truths uh, in a much more effective way. That's why Jeremiah is my favorite prophet. Jeremiah was a real visual teacher. He used just lots of things around to to help people grasp what God was trying to say to them. At one point, he actually put an oxen's yoke on his neck to to try to convince the leaders of Israel how they needed to submit to Babylon at, at a certain point in their life. He took a linen belt off and he crammed it in a a crevice of a rock and left it there for months and then pulled it out to show how ruined Israel was going to be if they did not submit to Babylonian rule. Before Israel was taken into exile, he went out and bought a field. He spent his own money and bought a field there in Israel as a concrete and visible way of saying, we're coming back, folks. Be ready for that. This is not forever. Now, Isaiah used some, some visual techniques as well. He, he walked around naked for three years, but, but that's just going a little too far for me. So we're going to stick with Jeremiah. And our text for this morning is one of those places where he used a visual to, to get a point across of how God works in our lives. The text begins with saying that, that he had gone down to the potter's house. The Spirit of God led him to go and just observe and to learn and to see what, what God had to teach him. Here's some of the lessons that he learned at the potter's house. The first lesson was that that God will take your life and will shape you for his use. He says he goes and he watches how the potter works the clay on the wheel. You know, this clay is not just something that you dig up out of the mud in your backyard. It's not Play-Doh that he was working with. Potters are very particular about the type of clay they use. They select certain clays with specific minerals in them uh, with the right texture and the right consistency to be able to form into their hands. And they take this clay and they, they have to let it mature, let it age for a while before it can be useful to them. You know, in the same way, you and I are chosen by God, specifically selected for the use that he intends for us. Jeremiah understood that very early in his life. He says in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, God spoke to him and said, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Early on, God chose you. Before you were ever born, God had a plan for your life and put you together exactly in the way that he wanted you to be. The psalmist said it this way in Psalm 139, The psalmist says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. You were chosen by God. You were selected by God. You were created in a fearful and wonderful way by God for the specific use that he has for you. 
And then God began shaping your life. That's what Jeremiah saw at the potter's house. He saw how the potter began shaping that clay and molding it and and forming it into exactly what he wanted. You know, my potter friends tell me that that the clay is cold and lifeless when when you first set it on the wheel. It's stiff and it's hard and it doesn't have much um, flexibility to it. But as it warms in the potter's hands and as the potter molds it and shapes it and begins to to add water and to to maneuver it around, then then that pot begins to take on shape. That clay begins to look like something that is useful to the potter. It's the same way with us. You know, when we stay away from God, then then we too are stiff. Spiritually, we are cold and we are hard and and it's hard for, for God to do anything with us. Isaiah said of the people in his day, he said, their hearts, their lips draw near to me, but their hearts are far away. And it's so easy for us to say all the right things and to, to, to voice all the right prayers in church, but, but it's another thing to actually put ourselves into the hands of God. But until we do that, until we give ourselves wholeheartedly to God and allow him to, to lead us by his Holy Spirit, allow him to direct our lives by his word, until we begin to listen to him in prayer, we'll never know the fullness of what God wants to do in our lives. But God uses all kinds of events, all kinds of people, all kinds of circumstances in our lives to shape us and to mold us. Maybe you have found that, that even during the challenges of this pandemic, even with the the difficulties that come with life, that, that you begin or beginning to sense that God is shaping you, maybe for a new ministry, Maybe to, 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 to be just a vessel of love and grace for people around you. A vessel that he can pour out to, onto others. Jeremiah saw that, that the potter chose the clay and began to shape it for his use. But, but then he, he says something else. He says in verse 4 of our text, he says, But the pot he was shaping for the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot shaping it as it seemed best to him. You know, that pot began to take on a different shape. Uh, sometimes, again, my potter friends tell me that, that imperfections in the clay will, will, will make it do odd things. Sometimes when you put a plate in the kiln, it'll, it'll begin to turn up like a Pringles can. Sometimes the colors that were specifically chosen for glazes just, just don't do right. It's kind of like the, the clay has a mind of its own, just like you and me. God has given us free will, which is such a great blessing that we we get to choose to love him. We get to choose to obey him. But so many times we choose not to obey him as well. Isaiah talks about this in chapter 45. He says, does the clay say to the potter, what are you making? Does your work say he has no hands? Aren't we sometimes like that? We complain about what God is doing in our lives. We we think he's he's lost control. He doesn't know what's best for us. We need to control our destiny. And then when he allows us to do that, we realize how we've messed up. Maybe this morning you have some of that sense. You feel like because of sin or injury or neglect or, or that you were deprived of something earlier on in life that somehow you missed out on on God's best for your life. Maybe you yourself have made some bad choices when you were younger or when you were adult or even today are making bad choices that keep you from God. But what Jeremiah learned is that that like that potter, God can restore. God can take what seems to be misshapen and he can start all over again and redeem it for his use. He can still turn it into something beautiful and something useful and something that brings him glory. Maybe today it feels like the end for you. You feel like you've you've missed the boat, but but God says that he wants to start over. He wants to start over with you and do something new and fresh in your life if you'll allow him to do that. There's one other word about this potter that that really comes from the New Testament. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, Paul says this in verse 20. In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for noble purposes and some for ignoble. But if a man cleanses himself from the latter, he will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, 
useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. God can, sometimes creates crystal goblets and sometimes creates trash cans. But, but we can all be useful to him if we allow him to cleanse us and consecrate us. Let me, let me trace a thread with you through the Old Testament. That, that's a beautiful word picture of this. And in the Old Testament, we read in 2 Kings that when the Babylonians attacked Israel, they took all of the goblets, gold goblets and silver goblets and pottery, out of the temple, and they took it back with them to, to Babylonia, and they left it there in, in storehouses. Nebuchadnezzar was the one who did that. But, but after Nebuchadnezzar died, his son Belshazzar threw a big party. It was really just an orgy. And he ordered the goblets that had come out of the temple in Israel to be used for this party. And they used these goblets to, to drink to pleasure and to, to worship pagan gods. And, and they were used for sinful things and unholy things and lifted to, to unholy lips. That's these goblets that were consecrated and created for God. But then later on in the book of Ezra, we read when God brought the people out of Babylonia and brought them back to Israel, they brought those same goblets with them. The same goblets that had been used for, for unholy, ungodly things were brought back to the temple. And there they were cleansed, and there they were consecrated, and there they were used again in worship. God can take your life and cleanse you. No matter what your bodies have been used for, no matter what your minds have been filled with, God can cleanse you of all that unrighteousness and make you useful once again. Jesus talked to the Pharisees about how you can't just clean the outside of the cup, you got to clean the inside as well. It's like what King David said he, when he prayed and said, Lord, search me and see if there's any wicked ways in me and cleanse me so that I can then tell your word, share your word again. God can do that in your life. He can cleanse you from those unholy things. He can consecrate you and set you apart. He can forgive. He can heal. He can repair whatever damage has been done in your life. Because that's why Jesus died. He died so that we might be forgiven. And if we confess our sins, He can forgive us of those sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. And it all comes from putting ourselves into His hands. Because in the hands of God, He can shape us. He can remake us. He can cleanse us. And He can use us. Will you pray with me this prayer? The words will be familiar to you as we pray the, the chorus to have thine own way, Lord. May this be our sacrifice of praise, our offer of ourselves to God today. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will while I am waiting, yielded and still. Amen. Hope you enjoyed our worship time today. This afternoon at four o'clock, we'll be having our second congregational conversation. Randy Ashcraft will be our facilitator for that. It's at four o'clock through Zoom. Uh, we uh, hope you can join us and you can share your hopes and dreams for our church and for our new pastor. Another announcement we have is that at every Thursday, we open up our sanctuary for a be still and know moment where you can come in and pray to God and just spend time alone and just uh, contemplate what, uh, what you feel like God wants to say to you. Thank you for coming today uh, and enjoy your afternoon. See you at four o'clock.